Hi, I'm Greg Vanish from Calibrated Success, and welcome to another DVD tuning training video. In today's video, we're going to be talking about Ford electronic fuel injection systems. And in this video today, what we're really going to do is follow along as I tune a car from start to finish. As we go through that process of tuning from start to finish, we're going to learn a lot about not only our car, but also the software that we're going to be using and the procedures which I follow to get the best behavior out of the car. The software we'll be using today is SCT and they have both the Advantage calibration software and the LiveLink data logging software. And between the two of them, it's a pretty powerful combination of tools that allow us to record everything that's going on inside the car and make intelligent changes to the calibration. We're going to make sure that we make intelligent calibration changes because we don't want to sit there and chase our tail. We always know that, oh, well, it's a little rich or a little lean. No, what we're going to be doing today is taking the engineer's approach and putting a number on it. We'll take a good quality air-fuel ratio measurement using a laboratory-grade wideband. Today I'm going to be using my ECM wideband and not using the factory narrowband O2 sensors at all. Now I know a lot of people have tuned cars using the fuel trims and watch and see what it learns, but you always give up a little bit of accuracy when you're doing that and you're trusting an unknown age of an unknown oxygen sensor. My laboratory-grade sensor was calibrated this morning before I plugged it into this car, so I know that it's not only healthy, but also accurate. So what we're going to do is use that high-quality sensor to do open loop calibration to develop our airflow model. The airflow model in a modern Ford vehicle is mass airflow sensor based. And so obviously the transfer function for the mass airflow sensor is very important. In addition to the mass airflow sensor transfer function, we also have a table called load with failed math on many of these vehicles. That load with failed math table is important to the ECU because it's get used during transient throttle conditions. Anytime the driver steps in or out of the throttle and we have a rapid onset of change of airflow, that ECU tends to look to that load with failed MAF to get a first guess before the MAF sensor catches up. So we want to make sure that that reference table matches the reality of the hardware on our car. Speaking of the hardware on our car, today's sample is a 2010 Mustang GT, but it also has the Celine supercharger on it. It's a Series 6.5 twin screw supercharger and it's a 485 horse kit, so it's making a little bit of extra boost and it has larger fuel injectors. So these changes of both the new intake manifold and supercharger and fuel injectors will require some calibration changes to the ECU to make this thing run properly. Our goal is to make this car run just as good as a normal factory Mustang GT so that the casual user could hop into the car and have a reasonable expectation this car will drive and behave as normal. I want my mom to be able to drive this car to and from the grocery store or parallel park it on a busy city street without having to worry about throttle control issues. Speaking of throttle control, since we're going to have a really good handle on our airflow numbers, we're going to take that airflow number that we know to be correct and we're going to work backwards and solve for the electronic throttle control tables. Now, the modern cars all have electronic throttle control, which means that the driver's foot position merely indicates a request. We need to process that request effectively and give the driver exactly as much power as he's asking for. Not too much, not too little. If we give him too much power and the power delivered is greater than what he's demanding with his right foot, we can end up in a runaway condition. Now we've all seen on the news how that can make national headlines. None of us tuning cars in the aftermarket want to make national headlines for cars that are running away. So in order to avoid that, we're going to take a look at a method that gives us the same kind of results as the factory. We're going to make sure that the airflow delivered by our system exactly matches the kind of power the driver is asking for and we'll tune the electronic throttle control so that that nasty wrench light on the dash only comes on if there is a legitimate failure. We're going to make sure on the other side of that that it will come on if there's a legitimate failure. I know a lot of tuners out there just flat out turn off these safety checks because it's an inconvenience to have the customer stranded on the side of the road with the wrench light on but we know that that's there for their own safety. And so we are not going to turn off a safety check. We'll calibrate it properly. And when we do that, we'll find that the car becomes very drivable. That's really our drivability tuning on most of these cars. And so that will give us a car that is very pleasant for anyone to hop behind the wheel of. In addition to electronic throttle control, we'll also talk about returnless fuel systems. These cars are equipped with an electronic returnless fuel system, and it's a variable speed pump. So it's not just an on-off switch, it actually gets a pulse with modulation to the pump. And so any change to the fuel system, whether it be the pump, a second pump, or sometimes even a third pump added in, new fuel lines, a new fuel rail, or new fuel injectors can require a different tuning to that system. 
Well, fortunately, we have the ability to tune that whole system. We can control what kind of voltage goes to that pump and therefore control the pump speed and pressure and fuel flow delivered to the engine so that the pump exactly matches the airflow what the driver is requesting at the engine. That way we have solid control of both the rail pressure and the air fuel ratio under any conditions. So get your laptops ready. Let's take a closer look at this vehicle and follow along as we go from start to finish in making this car drive just like it did as it came off the factory assembly line.